As most of you will know, despite having a mountain of smartphone hardware around the office, plenty to choose from. My main primary SIM is in the Apple iPhone 12 Pro Max shooting this video. And the curious thing is that this choice has absolutely nothing to do with iOS, the operating system inside, and it has very little to do with Apple's services or ecosystem. Now it's possible I'm a bit unusual here, but let me explain my rationale and you'll see where I'm going with it. I should note that as a self-confessed geek, of course, I have got several SIMs. I haven't just got the one number. So uh, for the moment, I've got my second SIM in the Sony Xperia 5 Mark II. I've got my tertiary SIM, the SN Illumia 1020, and I'll forget where my fourth is, possibly in a Samsung. But as I say, my main SIM is in the iPhone 12 Pro Max, and having used an iPhone now for over 18 months as a, a motorboat draws by, I'm doing a bit of outside broadcasting here. Yes, after 18 months with an iPhone, it's a pretty boring state of affairs for someone, a geek like me, with a YouTube channel. So I started thinking, could I actually give up the iPhone? Could I switch back? Now imagine an Android phone that, that bettered the iPhone 12 Pro Max in terms of specifications, screens, speakers, imaging and so forth. Would I cope with being deprived of some of the Apple stuff I've gotten used to? Now, as it turns out, I use comparatively few Apple apps and services, and I constantly feel guilty that I never use Apple Mail or their Office Suite or Notes. I just never use any of them. Um, so what do I use? iMessage, yes, kind of, uh, by default, but WhatsApp does the same stuff. It's video calling, I can send messages, I can send images via WhatsApp, and WhatsApp is already installed on this very iPhone. There's the Find My system, which I use about once a day to find out whether my wife is on her way home from work so I can get the tea going, that sort of thing. It's not exactly essential. I could use that on a second device, maybe a secondary iPhone, um, I've got the original SE, for example, or maybe an iPad. There's FaceTime video, but again, I just mentioned it. WhatsApp video does the same thing. I don't need FaceTime. AirDrop is really handy for getting captured videos like this one over to my Mac in, in seconds, but there are equivalents for Android and Windows PCs and other ways of doing things. I don't need AirDrop. It's purely a convenience. So quite a short pro Apple list then in terms of software, but it would be nice to be back in the Google ecosystem. I already use a, a Gmail, Google Drive, Google Maps, Google Documents, Google Keep, Google Calendar. You get the idea. And as I say, there's no shortage of Android phones here to choose from, but this is kind of where I get a bit stuck. Just as my destination isn't iOS per se, it's, it's also not really Android. Uh, it's been dawning on me now for a decade that the issue is nearly always hardware. It's finding the best hardware that meets my needs, the best hardware in my pocket. In this case, finding an Android device that can match the iPhone 12 Pro Max in, and I'll list these off, battery life per charge, um, two days of heavy use on this iPhone 12 Pro Max. It just goes on and on. Super pure camera images. I know, I know it's me. With, with Pro Raw captured on here though, we're way up in the Lumia PureView territory. Um, super detailed video capture, as you're hopefully seeing now, and with almost zero audio noise floor, indoors at least, maybe not down here by the river. Loud and high quality stereo speakers with the uh, um, bass octave shifting that Apple's famous for in the recent generations. Really, really good speaker experience. Excellent screen clarity, although this is partly down to Samsung because Apple's using Samsung displays, and I guess other Samsung flagships would also have just as good a display, but a good display is important. There's the sheer horsepower for crunching through video or a game or a complicated web page. I think I'd miss that if that wasn't there. And finally, the sheer sturdiness, the stainless steel frame, the ceramic shield glass, the IP68 down to six metres waterproofing for half an hour. It's just, it goes on and on. With my trademark ring key fusion case, this iPhone 12 Pro Max is virtually indestructible. I know, I know, famous last words. Anyway, this is this seven point list has been a somewhat longer list of requirements and it's completely independent of the underlying iOS. I heard on a podcast the other day someone talking about chasing the hardware and this is something I've been thinking about, I say, for a long time. After all, I've been from a Palm OS device, the Trio 180, Trio 270, Symbian OS in its various forms, communicators, S60 devices, N-series devices up to this uh, Nokia 808 PureView, Windows Phone, Windows Phone 8.1 with the Lumia 920, 1020. I then moved to Android with the Galaxy S2, Galaxy S4, various Nexi, Pixels and so forth, and finally to Apple with the Apple iPhones. There is precisely zero allegiance to any one software platform there. As long as the apps and services I want 
and the functionality are there, then I'm happy to go anywhere. Which is then kind of how I've ended up on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Looking at the flexibility in the UI and file system, yes, I would kind of prefer Android. And after all, I've got almost exclusively Google services going on, but they run just fine on the iPhone. And for that matter, the iPhone also hosts my Microsoft apps and services, including OneDrive, which I depend on every day. Most of all, though, it is the superlative Apple hardware. At a price, of course, this hardware and support network doesn't come cheap. By the way, I'm not shilling for honour, I just like promotional t-shirts for smartphone companies. I've got a whole collection now. If anyone out there has got some more to add to my collection, I may just wear them on cam.